in part five, I configured switch S1, and now I need to configure switch S2. I'm going to show you a handy trick for configuring S2. Now S1 and S2, their configurations are almost the same. There's some difference in the host name and some different addressing that we need to set up on S2 compared to S1. But aside from that, all the rest of the configurations are going to be the same. So I'm going to show you a handy trick whereby we can copy the running configuration from S1, edit our, the text in the configuration file and then basically paste it right into S2 to configure S2. So this will be a fun lesson and show a quick way to basically copy this configuration from S1 over to S2 but with some minor edits ahead of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into PC0 and go into the terminal and get my console connection to the switch. So we'll put in the username and the password all right, I'll type enable and the password class 12345 and now I'm in privileged user mode. Now what I want to do is do a show run command and output basically the running configuration. So there it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the whole thing here. I'll highlight the whole thing all the way up to let's say version 12.12 .12, and then I'll right click and copy it. Now I'm going to take this copied text and I'm going to paste it into Notepad on my desktop. So I'll just paste it in right there and you can see there's the configuration file and now all I need to do is edit it and then I can paste this configuration back into S2 and it'll work. So first of all these first two these first three lines are default configuration for the switch so I don't need those so I'll delete those but I'll keep service password encryption because I want that. I'm going to change host name to S2 because this is going to be for switch to S2. Notice this, enable secret, the 5 means MD5 encryption, and then the hash. So what we need to do is remove all of this and then type in the password as we want it, which is class 12345. I can move a couple, remove a couple of these, IP SSH version 2, IP domain name dance courses, that looks good. Now what we're not going to see here is the um, crypto key commands to set up our security keys. So I'm going to need to do that manually. So I'm going to do it after the domain name has been created because to set up our security keys we need a domain name. So right after that I'll put a new line and I'll say crypto key generate RSA because it's going to be RSA keys and then I'm going to put a new line and put 1024 because then it asks me do I want to accept 512 and I usually put in 1024 for the modulus size. Perfect. Now username admin secret and then the password was Dan's courses. So I'm going to get rid of the hash and that 5 and just put in Dan's courses here. Now the spanning tree mode is a per VLAN spanning tree protocol, but this is default. We didn't put these commands in here. So I'm going to take all of this and delete it because it's there by default. So I don't really need it. So I'll backspace that out and that. And now we can scroll back up here. So these are the commands we need. Interface VLAN 1, the IP address 4.126. Dot 192. Now this is was for the green VLAN for the switch's IP address for the green VLAN. We're working in the yellow VLAN now over here on S2. So we need to find out what is the switch's IP address. It says here the switches get the last usable address in the subnet. So if we open up once again this document and go to the top, you can see that the yellow subnet is 192 to 207 and the last usable address would be 206 with a slash 28 subnet mask. So the network is 192 network, it goes up to 207, that's the broadcast address, 206 is the last usable, and I need a slash 28 subnet mask. Okay, no problem. So we just put in here 4.206 and then over here we put 240 for the slash 28 subnet mask. So that's what that looks like. Now the default gateway, it's the 192 network and the router is the first usable host in the network. So instead of uh, 192, it'll be 
193. That's the first usable address in the network. So that's our default gateway. Now I'm almost forgetting something here. When we put the commands in the switch, we put interface VLAN 1 to get to interface configuration mode, we put in the IP address, and then we need to put in a command, and that command is no shutdown or no shut. So we'll need that command to turn on the interface, otherwise it won't turn on. Now, banner message of the day, you can see there's some control characters here. I'm going to replace these control characters on the beginning and the end with the quotation marks that I like to use. Okay, and then line console zero, login local, exec timeout, everything else looks good. I can leave everything else the way it is. So now I'll highlight all of it again and copy it. Copy. All right, I'm not copying the stuff here that has my subnets at the top, just the part that I edited. So now I'm ready to go to configure S2. All I need to do is remove the console cable from S1 drag it over to S2, put it in the console port, establish a console connection using the terminal, put in the enable command, and then conf t to get to global config mode. And now all I need to do is right click and paste in all of the text from our configuration file. And you can see it pastes in all of the commands, and you can see that they're all taken in order. And even our key generation worked as well. Look at this. Crypto key generate RSA. It gives me the reply. There's my 1024 being put in at the right moment. And then it's been enabled. So everything worked out quite nicely. And the interfaces are up. Notice the VLAN interface is up. Now all I need to do to finish the lab is save the running configuration to startup configuration. And now I need to copy the running configuration over to the TFTP server. So we'll do a copy run to TFTP and the address was 192.168.4. I believe it was the second address in the subnet so 194 and the destination file name s2-config. I'll hit enter and you can see it's writing the configuration over there now. You can see I get some exclamation points and it looks like OK. So it was successful. So now I've copied the configuration over there and I believe the lab is complete. Now when we go to check the score on the lab, let's take our, check our score and see how we did. It says we only got 92%. So what we'll do is we'll check the results and look at the assessment items and scroll down the list to see if we did anything wrong. It says we got 75 out of 81 and we'll see what didn't register correctly. So it looks like on R1 it doesn't like the crypto key set that I created. Now this isn't a, our fault because we set up our crypto keys perfectly. I think this is just Packet Tracer's fault and the fact that every time you set up the keys it's a new random uh, number situation so they're just not matching and that's okay. I'll just remove this from the packet tracer activity and re-upload it to my website and so next time we won't check this and then it won't be shown as incorrect. In other words, we did it and it's correct. And then you can see here, once again, the crypto key set not registering, the crypto key set not registering, and also it says that TFTP server, it doesn't like our R1, our S1, and our S2 configuration files right but we copied them successfully over there and I've double checked and they are there so this is just not registering correctly in this activity so it's another three things that I need to remove from the score count from the item count so that it doesn't get um, incorrectly evaluated so in other words if you got a 75 out of 81 and these were the things you were missing you got a hundred percent